vice president of education. She is a native of Denver, Colorado. She is a wife, a mother, and a grandmother, but she doesn't look it, but an author, entrepreneur. And today she will give, be giving her, her speech on speech number five out of the Confident Communicator. Okay. Let's welcome Yolanda Johnson Bryant. grandmother. I cried at first for a minute. Well, actually, it was longer than a minute. Then I calmed down and doused water on my face. And I looked in the mirror and said to myself, I'm a darn good looking grandmother. Then sadness turned into joy. And I said to myself, I'm going to be a grandmother. I had a mix of emotions the day my 20-year-old daughter called me from Denver and told me she was pregnant. Now, being that she's grown, I had expectations of what I wanted for her life. After all, I had raised her a certain way, to do things in a certain manner, the way I would like them to happen. I thought maybe she would finish college explore the world, get a career, fall in love, get married, and then have a baby. Well, I guess the joke was on me because everything that I had taught my children and all the role modeling that I did in an attempt to make sure they grew up the way that I wanted them to grow up went completely out the window. I really wanted my son to go into the military. He had other plans. Now my daughter, she took advanced classes and college courses throughout high school. So I wasn't worried about her getting into college. My son, on the other hand, he had mediocre grades. Now me, I'm still paying for college loans. I can't stay out of the classroom, so I guess I'll be paying for them until I die. Because of that, I didn't see it necessary to try to come up with money to pay for my son to go to college when he really didn't want to go, and he would only get mediocre grades. So I figured he could go into the military, he could get proper education, they could turn him into a man, he could be all he could be, that's the Army, join a few good men, the Marines, Aim high, which is the Air Force, or be a global force for good, which is the Navy. <laughs> At first, I beat myself up. Being a Christian, I raised my children on certain biblical principles. Proverbs says that you should raise a child in the way that they should go, and when they, return, when they become old, they'll never turn away from it. So does that mean that I have to wait until they get old before they actually get it? Unfortunately, my ex-husband and I divorced, and my children did not take it well. But I did everything in my power to try and ensure that their life still went on with a little normalcy. Fortunately, they took it harder than I thought they would take it. My children began to do and experience things that I wouldn't have approved of. And I put, again, great emphasis on I, because I had this vision of how I wanted my children to grow up, how I wanted them to be productive citizens in the world, how I wanted them to achieve their goals and their dreams. As I became older and wiser, I realized that I had to accept the fact that I had done my part to the best of my ability in raising my children. And at this point, I had to pray that what I had taught them was instilled in them and that they would use that as a guide in their life. 
after I came down from the high of having my first child, which was my daughter, I was reminded of the words of my late mother. When you have children, they're going to give you hell just like you gave me. <laughs> and I thought to myself, hmm, well, if my children are going to be like I was, they're going to be perfect. <laughs> and they were. Until they turned into these little aliens called teenagers. <laughs> After they turned teenagers, I didn't know what consumed their mind, their body. They started doing crazy things that I did not understand, that I can honestly say that I did not do as a teenager. I was too scared of my mother. Prior to becoming little monsters, I never had any problem with my children. I never had a problem with them sleeping through the night when they were babies. I never experienced the terrible twos. I never got calls from teachers. They weren't the perfect little children, again, until they turned into teenagers. I remember one night, while we were sleeping, my ex-husband worked the third shift, so my children slept in the bed with me. And we were sleeping, and all of a sudden, I heard, Wah! and then all of a sudden I heard, Wah! Wah! and I turned over, and my daughter had smacked my six-week six girls, my six-week son. And I asked her, why did you smack him? Because he is making noise, and I'm trying to sleep. <laughs> well, I did like any good black mother back in the day would have done. I smacked her on behalf of my six weeks. <laughs> and I told her, if you keep messing with him, when he gets older, he's going to pay you back. And that happened two years later. Me and my ex-husband were outside, and we heard her screaming for help. We run inside to see what's going on. And my two-year-old son had my four-year-old daughter by her hair, pulling her down the hallway, saying, I told you to leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> After I laughed for a few seconds, I pulled them apart. Uh, I have so many great memories of my children as they were growing up. Now I have bruised knees and constant prayer. Uh, of hopes that they will continue to be safe and make wiser decisions. Now, just when I thought I had failed as a parent, my daughter sent me a letter six months ago. Say, Mom, thank you for all that you taught me. I know you think that I wasn't listening, but I have to learn things my way in my own time. But I thank you. I was listening. So now I re release a sigh of relief and know that I did do my best to raise the children the best way that I could. And I pray that even though they were listening, that they actually get it. Now that boy, child, that's how I, what I call him. I haven't received that letter yet, but I'm still waiting on it. Thank you. How much time you have to I'm not sure. How much time do you have left when it's red? 30 seconds. 30 seconds. So, so it's green for the green. For, for the guests yellow. and for everybody, what we like to do now is add yellow. on the ballots. You'll see at the top it says first speaker. We'd like for you to raise some comments. Write some, excuse me, write